Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and we just got our first look at leaked Geekbench scores from the A14 processor. We have heard a lot about this processor because it's not only going to be the flagship processor inside of the upcoming iPhone 12 and the iPad Air, but because this A14 processor is the reference point to even the future of Apple Silicon-based Macs. And even though these Macs will be getting their own version of this chip, they are still based on the A14 process. So we can learn a lot about these leaked Geekbench scores and just how powerful these next generation devices from Apple are going to wind up being, and even how that powerful chip could have Apple competing against the likes of Nintendo, PlayStation, and Xbox, and just dominating the entire industry. Speaking of those gaming systems, and before we get into the main video, I wanted to let you know about a side project that I am working on. After growing this channel past 100,000 subscribers, I am now working on another channel that will have a gaming focus on reviewing gaming hardware with the upcoming launch of the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. So if if you're interested in gaming, do me a favor and subscribe to that channel early. There's no content on it yet, but I do plan on making some videos on it very soon. So be one of the first to sign up and get notified, unless you don't want more Greg in your life, which I totally understand. Greg is kind of, um, uh, boring. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So here they are. Here are the leak scores for the iPad Air. And we can see that it gets a single core score of 1583 and a multi-core score of 4,198. Also, for those of you who watched my video yesterday and are interested about comparisons between the iPad Air and iPad Pro, while well, the Air has four gigabytes of RAM based on this test and the latest iPad Pros have six gigabytes. Now listen, I know benchmarks are just benchmarks. I always say that in my videos and they may not be indicative of real world performance, but we just have to appreciate the significant engineering milestone from Apple Silicon chip team. The single core score in the A14, which is arguably the most important spec for overall processor speed in most applications, is just dominating. If we compare this to the iPad Pro, we can see that it beats it handily by almost 500 points. In fact, even if we compare this score against the highest available score on the Mac platform right now, we can see that the most recent 27 inch 10 core iMac gets a score of 12,052 on single core benchmarks, a desktop class chip versus a mobile chip, and the mobile chip is still beating it even with way less power consumption and way less thermal cooling. Don't forget, the iPad doesn't even have a fan inside of it while the Mac does. Like I correctly predicted in my last video detailing the differences about the iPad Air and iPad Pro, the A14 inside of the Air still does not have the best multi-core performance. The iPad Pro beats it. Apple's X, or I guess now Z versions of these chips are usually designed to have more headroom than what the iPhone version of this chip does. And the A14 in the air, make no mistake about it, was intended for the iPhone 12. So while the multi-core performance is still impressive for a mobile device, it's still not going to beat out the iPad Pro chip or some of the higher end Macs for that matter. However, don't forget that the A14 is just the reference point for all of Apple's chip designs for this year and next year, not only for the iPad Air and iPhone 12, but for the future iPad Pro, which will certainly get a much more souped up version of this chip, the A14X, which will have even higher multi-core and graphics performance, and maybe even more importantly, the A14X will be the reference point for Apple's transition to their own Apple Silicon-based chips inside of the Mac this year. Just look at the score that a regular version of the A14 is doing on this iPad Air. Now imagine that we boost this with the multi-core performance on the A14X inside of an iPad Pro. Now let your imagination run even more wild with larger batteries, larger bodies, possibly fan cooling, a A14X or whatever Mac version Apple designed for their laptops, it's easy to imagine a powerhouse of a laptop that easily outperforms anything currently offered by the likes of Intel, AMD, all while being super power efficient. That would let Mac laptops benefit from battery increases of as much as 50 to 100%, according to analysts like Ming-Chi Kuo. Furthermore, we know that Apple is also bringing this processor over to their desktop class lineup as well, with recent rumors of a 24 inch iMac appearing as soon as the end of this year or early next year. For laptops, Apple has to manage battery as well as power consumption because these devices usually run off of battery power. So imagine what Apple could do 
with their chip design when they are unconstrained from the limits of a battery. They could possibly ramp up the power consumption of these ARM-based chips even higher than they would be able to do on a laptop, and that could lead to significant performance increases. I know a lot of this is speculation based on just a single A14 Geekbench score, and that's kind of the point of this video, but even adjusting conservatively for the power differences between iPhones, iPads, and Macs, I feel increasingly bullish that Apple Silicon is going to dominate the end of this year and the start of next year. At this point, we are not seeing any significant competition or any similar efforts from major chip makers like Intel, AMD, or Qualcomm. In the past, Apple was tied to Intel's chip making roadmap, and when you went to purchase a Windows laptop and a Mac laptop, while the chips running in those machines did not really have major differences. That meant that the inside hardware of all of these computers were pretty much the same, and most of the differences came down to the design of the laptop and the software running on them. Now, for the first time in a while, Apple and Windows computers will have significant hardware differences that could lead to Apple having a massive lead in performance that could leave PC manufacturers in the dust. And it could be a significant reason to choose a Mac over a PC, especially for creatives and pros who need faster CPU workflows. On top of all that, Apple may actually try competing against the giants of the gaming industry with a souped up Apple TV complete with, you guessed it, an A14 chip and six gigabytes of RAM. Note it, Twitter leaker Fudge says that Apple Arcade is receiving a significant boost in funding. Fudge claims that Apple is looking for major titles that could rival games like Breath of the Wild, an incredibly popular open world Zelda game that was on the Nintendo Switch. These leaks also say that some of these bigger games will require an A13 chip or above to even run them, and that Apple is working on a dedicated gaming controller for the next generation Apple TV. Now, yes, Apple Silicon sounds amazing, but even an A14 equipped Apple TV probably won't compete against the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X in terms of raw horsepower. Those consoles just have way too much power for Apple to really go head to head in a graphics race with them. However, this A14 Apple TV could easily beat out the Switch in terms of graphical performance and with a plethora of mobile devices that easily outsell even a great selling game console like the Nintendo Switch, it's easy to imagine that Apple could have a really, really compelling gaming platform with the latest iPads, iPhones, and a home console with the new Apple TV and a increased focus on gaming from Apple. If you could play these games anywhere and you could have a reliable cloud saving system, this could, and I hate to say it because Apple's efforts in AAA gaming at this point have been severely lacking, but it could lead to a compelling platform if Apple dedicated enough time to great quality game titles and if they dedicated some better first party gaming accessories like a dedicated controller, not only for the Apple TV, but maybe for the iPhone and iPad as well. All of these efforts together are part of Apple's multi-year strategy of moving over all of their devices to be part of this singular chip platform, and it could lead to some pretty amazing benefits like we talked about, but there's one thing that's clear to me. Apple is just in a position to dominate next year with their significant lead in Apple Silicon, and it's going to lead to their entire product line being more intertwined, more connected into that famous Apple ecosystem and lead to significant performance gains across the entire platform. And it's something that no other company can currently compete with. But hey, that's just what I think. So please let me know what you think about the Apple Silicon transition and these A14 results in the comments below. As always, if you like this video, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. If you wanna help the channel out in any way, make sure you check out some of the affiliate links in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.